Welcome everyone to tonight's meeting of the Urban Planning Delegated Committee meeting on the 18th of July 2022. My name is Councillor Gary Thompson and I chair this committee. The Local Government Act 2020 enables Council to hold virtual meetings with councillors participating remotely by electronic communication. The Urban Planning Delegated meeting is being live streamed on the Council website to enable public viewing of the proceedings, including councillor deliberations and voting. The meeting is also being recorded and will be made available on the Council website as soon as practically possible after the meeting. Should technical problems be encountered during the meeting, the meeting may be adjourned until the problem is rectified or if needed, the meeting will be postponed. I acknowledge that all councillors are present on the screen for tonight's meeting. There are also officers in attendance tonight who will be introduced when they present their report. Essentially, the purpose of the Urban Planning Delegated Committee is to deal with issues under the Planning and Environment Act and the Building Act. This committee has delegated authority to make decisions on behalf of council. Councillors are familiar with the report, which includes a summary of any objections received. Tonight, we will be facilitating public submissions by electronic means of communication to hear from members of the community and or applicants. I will call you individually, and when it is your time to make your submission, you will be placed into the meeting to present your three minute submission. When making a submission, please present your viewpoints clearly and concisely on why you support or oppose the planning application. Please do not repeat what earlier speakers have said and keep your submission focused on relevant issues and points not previously raised. Importantly, focus on your concerns rather than matters of history or detail in the officer's report. If you are opposed to the planning application, please tell the committee why and suggest an alternative approach which would satisfy your concerns. There is a strict time limit of three minutes for every submitter. Whilst as chairperson, I reserve the right to vary it, I seldom do. So at the two and a half minute mark, I'll announce that you have 30 seconds remaining to conclude your presentation. Moving on to order of business this evening, Mr. Wee, are there any apologies this evening? Uh, through you, Chair, Councillor Bigger and Councillor Gillies, our apologies this evening. Thank you, Mr. Wee. Um, item one, adoption and confirmation of the minutes of the Urban Planning Delegated Committee meeting held on the 4th of July. Councillors, I'm in search of a mover. I think uh, Councillor Hollingsworth first and Councillor Galt, happy to second. Is there any opposition on that? There appears none, so I'll declare those uh, minutes now carried. Thank you, councillors. Move to item two, declaration of conflict of interest of any councillor or council officer. Are there any conflicts of interest this evening? There appears to be no conflicts of interest. So move on to item 3.1, presentations of officer reports. Uh, this is 9 Seattle Street, Baldwin North and 76 Wattle Road, Hawthorne. Heritage Overlay. This will be introduced by Officer Nick Brennan, Senior Strategic Planner. Thanks, Nick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you. Uh, this report relates to two properties that have been identified as being of heritage significance and that are subject to planning permit applications. 9 Seattle Street, Baldwin North and 76 Wattle Road, Hawthorne are both subject to live planning permit applications that imply demolition. In the absence of a heritage overlay, a planning permit is not required for the demolition of these properties. The two properties have been investigated for heritage significance and have both been recommended to be included in the heritage overlay as individually significant properties. Heritage citations for each property are included as attachments to the report. Uh, on the 27th of May, 2022, an application to demolish 76 Wattle Road, Hawthorne was lodged under section 29A of the Building Act in response, officers have suspended that application for demolition and applied to the Minister for Planning for an interim heritage overlay for that property. Uh, in addition, on the 11th of July, 2022, an application to demolish 9 Seattle Street, Baldwin North was lodged with Council. As this was after this report had been completed, it's not reflected in the published report. Pending tonight's decision, officers will lodge an application for an interim heritage overlay for that property as well. 
Uh, it's recommended that UPDC resolve to adopt the two heritage citations and to apply to the Minister for Planning for authorisation to prepare and exhibit a planning scheme amendment to introduce heritage overlays over 9 Seattle Street, Baldwin North and 76 Wattle Road, Hawthorne, and also to apply to the Minister for Planning requesting introduction of an interim heritage overlay over 9 Seattle Street, Baldwin North. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Uh, councillors, this evening we have seven uh, people who've indicated they wish to make a submission. Uh, for the benefit of those that are about to join us, once I've. Uh, Councillor Franco. Chair, I've just received notice from a resident who says he's having difficulty logging on and wished to speak and actually drove to the council chamber. His name is Mr. Greg Price. He may be known to you, I'm sure he is. Yep. I don't know um, if there's something or if I can put him in touch or provide the details to the is, governance. So, uh, Councillor Franco, there is an opportunity for Mr. Price in the chamber. I think it's in the airport lounge to be able to make a digital presentation. Okay, I'll pass that on. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, uh, someone from governance might be able to greet him there. Well, um, yes, he's out the front of the chamber. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so, for the benefit of those presenters this evening, once I've announced your name, a member of the governance team will enable access to the meeting so that you can make your submission. If a submitter is not present when their name is called or a submitter experiences technical issues, we will move on to the next speaker. Once all speakers have made their submissions, we will attempt to hear again from the uh, speaker who had some technical issues. I'll remind everyone um, a strict time limit of three minutes per speaker. Uh, once you commence your uh, submission, please commence with your name and your suburb in which you reside. And we'll take this one by one. I believe our first presenter through governance is Andrea Pagliaro. Hi, am I on? Are you there, Andrea? Yeah, yeah, it's Andrea Pagliaro. How are you? Thank you. If we can just commence with your name, your suburb, uh, followed by your three minute presentation. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, my name is Andrea Pagliaro. I'm a town planning director at Urbis. I'm acting for the owner at 76 Wattle Road in Hawthorne. Thank you. Thank you. Please commence with your presentation. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening, and uh, good evening to you, councillors, as well. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to present tonight on the proposed heritage overlay at 76 Wattle Road. Um, the proposed control, uh, we say, is a knee-jerk response to residents living in an area that has been identified by the council for moderate change and growth. The site is in the GRZ2, which is known as Contemporary Townhouse and Inner Urban Precincts. The strategic framework plan and housing strategy in the planning scheme identify the site as a moderate change area that supports villas, townhouses and apartment buildings. To ignore this direction is like having a foot on the brake and a foot on the accelerator at the same time. It's not orderly and proper planning. Wattle Road and this property have had heritage, heritage reviews in 1993, 97, 2006, 2009, 2011, 2014, and most recently in the 2018 GAP study. For how long can you flog a dead horse? Seriously, the GML citation, which contains emissions that I'll get to, disregards these earlier studies, especially the two undertaken for the same area by Lovell Chen in 2009 and 2014. The 2009 Lovell study reviewed the city's C-grade buildings at the time and found that 76 Wattle was not worthy of a site-specific heritage control as proposed tonight. It found that the dwelling was too altered and of insufficient architectural significance. The 2014 study further noted that the house is a relatively common residential typology in Burundara that there are numerous related examples and confirmed that the house had been altered, including the application of textured render servicing to the main walls, which was not picked up by GML, the replacement of the roof and the removal of the randas to two of the main prominent walls. We now have a study suggesting the polar opposite and that it is of individual significance. The highest local grading to a dwelling that has been butchered over the years, it's absolutely preposterous. While the proposed citation prepared by GML acknowledges that the veranda has been removed and the roof altered, it fails to acknowledge that the render has also been removed and replaced with new render, something that could have been picked up if they inspected the site and didn't rely on doctored images from real estate agent websites. 
These are all substantial alterations that drastically impact the heritage significance of this dwelling. Councillors, the purpose of a site-specific control is to preserve fine examples of dwellings that continue to make a heritage contribution, not altered and relatively common dwellings that the Council has identified in studies over two decades and most recently in the 2018 GAP study, where officers seconds. noted uh, these properties have been reviewed for their heritage significance. However, due to lack of intactness, they do not meet the standard to be recommended for an individual control. What has changed? Well, we say nothing has changed in the last four years or even the seven to eight years to warrant uh, individual heritage protection. Our client de deserves certainty and not perpetual heritage investigations. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr Peglio, for your presentation. Spot on timing, spot for three minutes. Um, Councillors, are there any questions of our presenter this evening? There appears to be no questions. Mr. Pagliaro, thank you very much for Thanks your presentation. For your Thanks thank for you. Your time. So, councillors, we'll move on to our second presenter, Ms. Christina Brannigan. Good evening, Ms. Brannigan. Can you hear us? Yes. Hello, Councillor Thompson. Can you hear me? We can indeed. Thank you. If we could um, just commence with your name, your suburb, followed by your three minute presentation when you're ready. Okay, yes. Thanks very much. My name is Christina Brannigan. I live in Camberwell um, and I do have some slides that I think the governance department um, are going to put up on the screen for me, please. Okay. Our governance got those slides. Pretty sure they do. I spoke to Kirsten earlier. It's okay. Governance is. Sorry, okay. they're just a large file, so it's taking a while to upload. Apologies for okay. this. We'll give it a, a couple of seconds and we'll see. Hopefully, they come up, Ms. Brannigan. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. Good evening, well, everybody. Thank you. Thanks very much for the opportunity to speak. And, and I'd really like to thank Council for undertaking the heritage study on Wattle Road and for trying to protect number 76. It's obviously a place that needs to be conserved. Um, I note it actually wasn't included in the 2018 GAP study. And I think a lot of us in the community believe that the last study that was undertaken was in actual fact not satisfactory and, and not wide in its scope, pretty narrow. I don't have time to talk about that now, but happy to at any time in detail. I'd like to give some background actually to Wattle Road to sort of reiterate how important it is to protect number 76. Um, we can see from this first slide, which is a leaflet from the Hawthorne Historical <clears throat> Society's Book of Walks, that Wattle Road has been included in historic walks and local history books for many years. It really is a unique street in Hawthorne. Um, as you walk down it, it really shows you the story of the development of Hawthorne. And the next slide, please, <clears throat> shows us that Wattle Road, or Weinberg Road, as it was called, if we see the little red dot there, um, was one of the oldest and earliest roads in Hawthorne. This is a map from uh, 1858. The first European residents were linked to the early migration of German families who lived on Wattle Road, and they played a big role in the early development of vineyards, making Burundara the third largest grape producer of the time. We move to the next slide. Today, it's got many, many representative and aesthetic examples of heritage architecture, including number 76, which is an important keynote building at that part of the street. <clears throat> this is an example of some of the other mid 19th century, other 19th century buildings that are not protected and that are quite typical on that street. Um, its residents included several people who impacted the history of Hawthorne. Um, it even attracted many highly regarded Melbourne architects during the 19th century and through to the 20th century. There's even a, a house designed by <clears throat> Roy Simpson and a house by Neil Clarahan on the street. In total, there are at least 40 heritage houses there, including number 76. And it's important that 76 has an opportunity to be seriously protected. Um, yeah, there's also an opportunity to protect this important street. If we go to the next slide, please, <clears throat> about five of the houses still standing on the street and the one on the right hand side is an example are still related to those early German families 
um, who, who basically began the street uh, and started that grape growing. The house on the left is an example of one of the early mayor of Hawthorne's homes. So there's a lot of historical connection on the street as well as architectural connection. And if we go to the next slide, to everyone's great distress. Seconds, Ms. Okay, to everyone's great distress, number 58 <clears throat> is being demolished as, as we speak. It started today, a house that people in the street have been trying to protect for a very long time. So am I, am I out of time now? Uh, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. If we could just go to the, the, the next slide and the one after. We can see Wattle Road in, in the middle there with that yellow squiggly line. And you can see there, um, someone on, we, we filled in the, the houses on the street that are actually of heritage grade. And I think you can see it's sandwiched between Lisson Grove and Manning Tree Road precincts. And we can really see why, how deserving it is, how many heritage streets houses there are on that street and why local people are fighting so hard. Thanks, Ms. Brannigan. We'll just wrap your Thank presentation you. up there. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. I'm glad our technology allowed those images to be um, shown. Uh, councillors, are there any questions of Ms. Brannigan? There appears to be no questions. Ms. Brannigan, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Um, now, I believe we have might be a little bit out of order, but I'm hoping Mr. Greg Price is able to present, uh, Mr. Wee. See you, Mr. Price. Can you hear me, Mr. Price? I certainly can. Can you hear me? Oh, I can indeed. Thank oh, you. For that. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, after the the race down, I just discovered we're online. Um, so if, sorry, go on. Yeah, if we can just commence with your name, your suburb, and your three minute presentation. Thank you. I was about to. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Greg Price from Glen Iris. Um, good evening, councillors. I'd like to object to the to the proposed amendment on procedural fairness grounds rather than you know the the actual citation merits which i i think there there are some merits and i'm familiar with you know the waddle the waddle road area the the issue that i have is that you know according to the date so you know when we're looking at say pages 10 and 11 of the um you know in, in of the timeline which shows the timeline of events essentially the the, the owners of the property were notified after the, um, you know, after the investigation was done. And when you see with some of the, with some of the dates, they've gone, they're obviously into their projects and then they find out that it's like, well, there's, there's been an, an assessment done. And, you know, when really the, it was decided long before that a, an assessment was, was being carried out. So in the, um, sorry for the, so in the case of um, the property at Ball and North, the um you know the, the review had been going on like it was identified as early as 2015 and um the the council engaged the um the peer review process in you know, february 21 and um then in in august 21 the you know in 2021 the council notified the, the property owners and there was the um you know they they lodged their permit not, not long after and um down in hawthorne you know there was a, a similar thing where the um there was a request from the residents back in March 2021, and the permit was lodged in March 2022, and then a letter sent to the owner in April 2022 saying that it's it's being investigated. And I I, I don't really understand why Delp would have a you know, a heritage overlay layer if it can't be relied upon to make you know d decisions or or at least council you know should be making the you know. A, the database available saying, you know, we've received submissions on a on a site or, you know, they, they could be contentious rather than discovering when you put a, a, a planning permit or a 29A application in that there is a um, there's heritage interest. So um, my, my objection is purely on procedural fairness. And so while, you know, it's it's, it's not designed to go and ob obstruct the, you know, the existing amendment, I, you know, perhaps it should be considered as a, as a separate a separate item because the issue has been raised before, and I, I think there should be certainty for residents um, in advance of, you know, the, you know, placing permit applications. Um, hopefully that was clear. Sorry for the, you know, for the for the rush thing. So thanks very much, Chair. All good, and yeah, you finished within 20 seconds to go. So thank Fantastic. you, Mr. Price, for that. Um, Councillors, are there any questions for Mr. Price? 
for saving. There appears to be no questions, Mr. Price. So thank you for your presentation. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, we'll return back to the um, list of presenters. I think our next presenter is Dr. Andrew Nunn. Good evening, Dr. Nunn. Can you hear us? I'm going to get the uh, how to work. Can you see me? Uh, we can now, Dr. Nunn. You're very, very quiet. Is there any opportunity to I'll, I'll talk closer to the microphone? Thank you very much. That's why you you might need to talk up a little bit louder as well. Yeah. Look, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk tonight. Uh, and to the you. council and council officers for. Uh, if we could, sorry, Dr. Nunn, can we just commence with your name and your suburb? Oh, yeah. and, Andrew Nunn, 78 Waddle Road, Hawthorne. Thank Fantastic. you all for letting this uh, very important issue be addressed so, uh, so promptly and urgently. This has led to some issues for the, for the people uh, around the house and in the, in the surrounding area because in fact, they haven't been adequately um, notified and a lot of people are actually unaware of this meeting and certainly totally unaware of any impending demolition. Um, and, and look, I, I think it's very important to realise that 58 Wattle Road is, is being knocked over at this very point. In terms of 76, I think the report stands for itself and it in fact reinforces the reports, of the previous reports and uh, other, other evidence has been provided by other people, uh, this being a true heritage house of grand proportions, of Italian nature, uh, on two metres of blue stone with a beautiful setback, and it looks fantastic from the street. Uh, our house is, in fact, a replica of this, of this house, and they were built by the same person. And I, I can understand and very much the qualities in this house, and I think people. Cut down, not by the residents, but by the developers. Uh, one tree that's at high risk, Norfolk Island Pine, which was present in the 1945 aerial photographs as a substantial tree, and that needs to be preserved. The 76 is actually the keystone, a very unique part of the of the street, and basically there's an uninterrupted run of older houses, which was described by Christina Brannock. The, the idea of 10 three-storey houses being built on this block uh, as a swathe in the middle of the school precinct, which is actually very historical, is of enormous concern. Now, I understand the developer will be saying that, that, that it doesn't suit here, his classifications. It, these have changed and should change again. We should put the brakes on this, to put it simply, and we need to learn the lessons of history. We should not let things just be knocked over. So that's my view. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nunn, um, for your presentation. Councillors, are there any questions of Dr. Nunn? We do have a question, Dr. Nunn, from Councillor Hollingsworth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Nunn, and I, I think you can hear, still hear, I just, we can't see you. There you are. Um, your transmission faded in and out. Um, and I heard you say something about a significant tree. Was is that on your property or is that on seventy six? It's on the boundary of the seventy six and seventy eight. Right. It is a very substantial tree, mm -hmm. and there was an attempt to cut it down, which uh, we managed to stop. Right. And um, are you aware that at Burundara we do have a significant tree register where you can actually um, register that tree? Um, and look, I won't take up too much time now, but uh, perhaps um, if you could email um, your ward councillor. I've approached the chief arborist, but the problem is that none of the documentation actually addresses that issue. Right, okay. Um, I was just going to say, though, if you're interested in registering the tree as significant, if you wouldn't mind emailing your board councillor and they can guide you how to do that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsworth. Any further questions, councillors? There appears to be none. Uh, Dr. Nunn, thank you for your presentation this evening. Thank you. So, councillors, our next presenter this evening is Mr. Daniel Louis. Good 
Evening. Can you hear me? Uh, we can, Mr. Lou. You're a little bit faint. I'm just trying to find you on the screen, actually. Can't see you on the screen. Um, doesn't seem to be showing the video for me. Um, can anyone else see Mr. Louie on the screen? No, I, I don't seem to have the video icon um, showing against my name. Okay. Um, Mr. Wee, are we happy to accept a verbal submission without seeing the presenter? Um, yes, in the circumstances, I think we can. Thank you. Thank, uh, thanks, Mr. Louis. Um, if we can commence with your name and your suburb, followed by your three-minute presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Um, so, yeah, good evening, councillors and those in attendance. Um, my name is Daniel Louis of Baldwin North, um, and I speak in regards to 9 Seattle Street, Baldwin North. Um, so, Seattle was purchased in March 2021 um, with the future consideration that we do have the opportunity to develop um, the property for our family. So I feel that when we purchased this property in good faith um, and understanding that there were no heritage controls, um, to now be in attendance on the subject of this matter and potentially see our opportunity quashed, um, I feel that we've just been unfairly treated. Um, I think it was noted by previous submitters, um, the report notes that there were multiple occasions where council had notified property owners um, regarding the heritage investigation. So August 10, 21, January 4, 22, January 31, 22, um, and most recently July 5th, 2020, uh, 22. Um, I can advise the committee in confidence that we received no such correspondence um, from council either via electronic or paper means, other than the last date that I'd noted, July the 5th, um, which was via mail, um, paper means, um, which highlight the invitation to attend this meeting regarding Seattle. Um, Seattle. So ultimately giving us less than two weeks to really digest firstly what had come to a surprise as to us. Um, and secondly, um, an attempt to understand this process. Um, whilst we haven't had the opportunity of time to assess the matter in depth as the council or the officer who wrote this report, um, I just put my position or our position of not being in support of the overlay. Um, with one person's dream of building his ideal family home in 1975, should be no different from another seeking to build theirs today. Um, I'd like to conclude um, by highlighting that whilst I do understand there's a degree of oversight and compliance in town planning considerations, in terms of the property, um, is what you have legally purchased really considered yours and within your control? Um, it may be easier to pass judgment on people or on the topic, um, similar to the officer's subtle, subtle reference to why, um, which I'm not, um, but why there has been an extensive replacement of interwar um, and 1940s homes since 1990. Um, but everyone's circumstances are different. And when you're, on the, when you're on the other side looking over, sometimes you don't grasp the whole situation or how stressful um, you know, something like this may be. Um, so I'd like to get the councillors to put this into consideration when reviewing this matter today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Louie. And um... <clears throat> You had 30 seconds to conclude, which is so it's good timing. Councillors, are there any questions for Mr. Louis? There appears to be no questions. Thank you for your presentation uh, this evening, Mr. Louis. So our next presenter, councillors, is Ms. Narita Muelden. Good evening, Ms. Muelden. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, we can indeed. Can Thank you. you. Can you so see we... me? Uh, we, see, we can see your name on the tile. So if we can just commence with your name and your suburb, followed by your three minute presentation. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Nerida Muirden. I live in Camberwell, but formerly a Hawthorne resident who lived near Wattle Road. Um, I have a photo um, that I was hoping might be displayed. Oh, thank you so much. That's great. Anyway, um, hello, councillors and officers. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. And thank you for the work you have done on Wattle Road. I am in support of the officer's recommendation to grade 76 Wattle Road as an individually significant graded place. In fact, a previous study did identify the house as probably IS. It is an important house. The Heritage Consultants report is excellent and great that it is online on the Burundara website for everyone to read. Wattle Road has so much history, it must be one of the oldest streets in Hawthorne. It was settled by German families in the 1850s and they planted vineyards and by 1875 over 40 homes had been built. 
76 Waddle Road was built in 1882 and according to the report is still a largely intact Italianate villa. One of the key features is the huge garden setting with the long driveway up to the house. In these times of climate change, we need our gardens and we enjoy our gardens even more so after our lockdowns during COVID. 76 Wattle Road is clearly a historic Victorian house and I support the officer's recommendation to protect the house as individually significant. I'm hoping the house can be protected, not just for our generation, but for future generations to appreciate. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Ms. Muirden, for your presentation. We'll just return back to the full screen. Councillors, are there any questions for Ms. Muirden this evening? There appears to be none. So thank you for your presentation, Ms. Muirden. Okay, thanks. Um, now we'll move to our next presenter, um, uh, is Mr. Phil Prench. I hope I've pronounced your surname correctly, Mr. Prench. Close enough, it's, uh, it's Prince. Prince, thank you for that. Um, if, we, if we can commence with your name and your suburb, followed by your three minute presentation. Thank you. It's Phil Prince and I'm a Hawthorne resident. Thank you. Um, so I didn't have a lot to add, um, but uh, I will reiterate a couple of the comments. So firstly, uh, I'm in support of the heritage listing and protection. Um, and just wanted to reiterate a couple of comments. I'm, I'm very glad that Nerida mentioned the garden. Um, I think it is pretty unique, um, that, that large front setting with the house set back on the property. Um, and actually that uh, it's, it, it does make it pretty clear and Andrew mentioned this as well, that it does match the next door as a pair. You only have to look, look at the two properties to it, it's quite stark that they're a matching pair. Um, and my understanding is, um, that next door is heritage. So, um, yeah, probably the, in reference to some of the earlier comments that talked about, um, the past and, um, you know, um, Greg's comments around procedural fairness. Um, and I didn't get the guy's name from Urbis, but his, his comments around prior reviews. I just, my only comment in that is by default and definition, like heritage has to be more dynamic than that. So it's not a static thing. Um, so I, I kind of object to both those positions. And the final thing I wanted to raise, and I don't think it's necessarily heritage related per se, but I, but I think it is really important. Um, it, we're in a school area. The street is effectively a one way street. There's next to no parking already. Um, I drive my kids to school every morning and it's, I, I, I would be gravely concerned about safety concerns. Um, if there was a place in the position that had uh, the, that had townhouses there, um, it, it's already very crowded. Um, anyone that hasn't driven down Waddle Road in the school hour, I'd, I'd encourage you to do so. Um, I think I think the more development that happens in this street, it's a matter of time before there's a significant accident. So that, that was that was really it from my perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Um, Councillors, any questions of our presenter? There appears to be none, Mr. Prince. Thank you for your presentation this evening. Thank you. And our last presenter this evening um, is Miss Anna Prince. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Anna Prince and I live in the Hawthorne area also. Um, just wanted to, um, I suppose, voice my support for the um, heritage overlay for 76 uh, Wattle Road. Um, all the comments that have been made so far about the historical significance and what was included in the report, I heartily support and really wanted to just add um, my concern to the fact that this little pocket of the street, this end of the street is a beautiful historical area for people to walk through and really see the progression of architecture from the 1880s through. We've already lost one house um, tragically today with the de demolition and I think for this to happen again in 76 would be an absolute tragedy and um, in a more practical um, I suppose concern as a parent we're right next door to Glen Ferry Primary School. The back entrance to the school is located almost directly opposite 76. It's a very narrow road anyway. You couldn't get two cars down there at the same time. Um, I think putting in 
what I would consider high density dwelling of 10 three storey townhouses would drastically increase the amount of cars on the road in that particularly small little area with very little room to turn. I think the residents of 26, uh, 76 at the moment even have trouble turning in and out of their driveway as it is. Um, so I think even more cars trying to turn in and out of that driveway would be a disaster. Um, there's already been a traffic accident at the end of Wattle Road um, where it meets Glen Ferry Road. I think that was a few years ago and unfortunately a pedestrian was killed. And I think that um, having even more cars just increases that risk enormously and it's, it's really not something that I want to see happen, particularly with the amount of small children buzzing around um, in the streets in the morning and in that street in the morning and the afternoon in that sort of area from Glen Ferry up to 76. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, councillors, are there any questions for Ms. Prince? There appears to be no questions, so thank you very much for your presentation this evening. Thank you all. Uh, governance, I just want to confirm that there are no further presenters. We have uh, no further presenters that have indicated they'd like to speak. That's the evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Wee. So, councillors, we'll turn to uh, questions, uh, matters arising from officers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just uh, based on what's been said by some of the uh, presenters tonight, I just want to start by saying that what we're considering tonight, or what you're considering tonight, isn't the development application and it isn't matters of um, car parking or increased. Uh, traffic that might arise through any development. That's a separate matter that's been considered by Council Statutory Planning Department. Um, what tonight is about is considering whether or not we will commence a planning scheme amendment to put a heritage overlay on these properties. Um, so in terms of that, I acknowledge that this has not been the ideal process given that both properties are subject to planning permit applications. Um, it has uh, necessitated Council um, acting on these uh, outside, uh, quicker than the normal process would be. Um, and uh, we also acknowledge that that results in um, potentially plans for these properties being um, uh, caught unawares of uh, changes to the planning laws coming about. Um, ideally, that wouldn't happen. But uh, once we are aware that a property has area significance and has been identified, then it is out um, the duty as officers to bring that um, to aware to the public as quickly and as efficiently as we can, and to then commence the public process of actually going through a planning scheme amendment, through which affected property owners will have an opportunity to view the proposal, um, to make comment on it, to make submissions to it, and um, also potentially be heard at a, a planning panel. Um, so this is the beginning of that, the decision of whether to begin that planning scheme amendment process. This is not the end of the process. Um, with regards to 76 Wattle Road, um, we acknowledge that there have been previous studies of this property and this area, and to date, this pro or in those previous studies, this property has not been recommended to go into a heritage overlay. Um, however, there has also not been a case where this property has been, has been recommended, had a citation prepared, and then been found to not measure up through the public amendment process. Um, there are uh, changes in what is considered heritage over time. There are changes through different heritage consultants doing studies over time. Um, and uh, there has been a citation prepared for this property that lays out the case for why this property should be in a heritage overlay. Um, and we will now go through the public process, uh, through the public amendment process to have that citation tested and to check whether or not it measures up and the property warrants going into a heritage overlay. Um, uh, the the site is in a, a general resident general residential zone too. That is correct. Um, there are also other properties in this street that are already in a heritage overlay. The heritage overlay is a different consideration to the zone. Um, it does not preclude development. It introduces an additional consideration. The demolition of this property is not prohibited. A planning permit is required if it goes into a heritage overlay to develop the property. Um, it will allow, it'll allow council statutory planning staff to consider the heritage merits of the property as well as the development and come to a balanced outcome in deciding that planning permit application. Um, what 
what else have we got there? Um, oh, in terms of the um, statement that um, the render has been removed and replaced on the site, not being picked up in the citation, that's the sort of thing that may not necessarily be picked up with a, uh, an inspection of the site. Uh, that is the sort of thing that we would expect to come to light through the exhibition process and through submissions from owners and occupiers who know more about the site um, and is something that can be uh, incorporated into a citation um, and uh, and weighed up as to determine whether to go forward or not. And it can also be considered by a planning panel to see whether that is a, um, a change that renders the property no longer of heritage significance. Um, oh, and finally, there were some statements about um, the extent of Wattle Road and other properties in the street. <coughs> we, the council officers are currently investigating the remainder of properties in the street and uh, having citations prepared for properties that th that are recommended to go into the heritage overlay. That'll be the subject of a future report and consultation process before coming back to council. Um, so we'll consider the rest of those properties in, in the future. Uh, thank you. I think that's everything I have, but happy to take any further questions. Thank you, Mr. Brennan, for addressing the residents' presentations. I do have um, so we'll turn to questions of councillors and Councillor Galt. Councillor Galt, um, there we go. Sorry, well, you thank you, Jim. Didn't, didn't no, quite catch. No questions tonight. I just like to foreshadow a motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. That is noted. Um, councillors, are there any um, questions of officers? Doesn't appear to be any hands up. So, Councillor Galt, you did foreshadow a motion. Um, what's your motion? I'd, I'd like to move that we accept the officer's recommendation tonight. Thank you. And do I have a second to Councillor Park? Are you happy to second that? Yes, Chair. Thank you. To assist Councillor Galt and Councillor Park, is there any opposition on this item? There appears to be no opposition, so I'll hand to you, Councillor Galton. Councillor Park, do you wish to speak to the, your uh, as a seconder? Uh, no, the motion's not opposed, so I'm happy to forego that, right? Thank you, Councillor Park. So I'll hand to you as the mover, uh, Councillor Galt. Thank you, Chair. Um, look, I'd just like to address the issues with 76 Water Road tonight, and uh, I hope Councillor Park was going to address Seattle Road, but so be it, I can make a comment on that at the end. But look, I had the great pleasure of walking down Water Road last year. It was on the occurrence of when we were looking at the demolition, potential demolition of 58 Water Road, which I understand tonight is underway. Um, 76 was not a house that we were looking at at that time, but I do remember noticing that house because we were also looking at a series of other houses which were at risk. And when I looked at 76, I thought, surely, this is a lovely house in terrific condition. This is surely not at risk. What a surprise when it popped up and we have an application to build 10 townhouses on that site. I know that's not an issue tonight. It will be further on, but not tonight. So the house itself, as many people have pointed out tonight, is a wonderful example of a Victorian Italian villa built in 1882 along with many other houses, stately homes that were built in that part of town uh, on large garden lots after the railway was extended through to Hawthorne. It has been pointed out there have been some modifications, but the report clearly says that most of these are readily reversible and the one about the render we will deal with through the process, no doubt. But the lot itself perhaps is even more significant as has been, has been pointed out tonight, it used to be called Weinberg or, or Vineyard Road, uh, or its nickname was German Lane after the German settlers that moved in there and started little vineyards, etc. This clearly gave rise to deep blocks which supported lots of vines and is an important part of our history, a very important part of our history. But it also rendered us with lots of blocks that were very important to developers, and that's what we're dealing with tonight. But I think 76 Water Road is a wonderful, intact example of a stately home built in the 1880s on these wonderful vineyard lots. If ever there was an example of an early heritage Hawthorne of Burundara dwelling that needs support, this is it. So I encourage my fellow councillors 
to support this motion to prepare an amendment for permanent heritage protection of this dwelling. Um, in relation to Seattle Road, I'd say a street, I think it is, um, I'd have to say I'd support that on the basis of the strong recommendation from our heritage consultants. We go through this process and we regard their recommendations highly. So I'd support us supporting the recommendation on both dwellings tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Galt. As this motion is unopposed, I'll put this motion to the vote. All those in favour? I declare that carriage unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Move on to item four, general business. Are there any items of general business this evening? There appears to be none. Item five, urgent business. Are there any items of urgent business? Also appears to be none. Are there any items of confidential business? There appears to be no confidential business. So thank you, councillors. So thank you to all the submitters and members of the community who joined us online this evening. Um, I do officially now declare the Urban Planning Delegated Committee meeting closed at 7.21. Thank you, councillors, and thank you, officers.